Ben uh, Shapiro. Uh, <laughs> I, I, mean, I wonder if he really understands what he's saying here. Um, the world in which we would live in where, um, I mean, this is completely consistent with um, right-wing talking points that mm -hmm. there is something morally reprehensible about, or, or you often hear morally reprehensible about people who are uh, living in poverty. In this instance, um, the uh, that Shapiro, yes, Shapiro is just simply saying there's a genetic predetermination as to whether you will live in poverty. Here is Ben Shapiro. So the California guidelines could overhaul the way many school districts approach math instruction. The draft rejected the idea of naturally gifted children, recommended against shifting certain students into accelerated courses in middle school, and tried to promote high-level math courses that could serve as alternatives to calculus, like data science or statistics. Okay, so first of all, if you reject the idea of naturally gifted children, it's because you're an idiot. Some kids are gifted, period, end of story. Some kids have higher IQs than others. And shock of shocks, it turns out that there is a heavy, heavy genetic component to that. That if both parents are neuroscientists, there's a good shot that their kid is going to have a higher IQ than somebody, both of whose parents are on welfare. Hey, okay, that is just the... <laughs> I'm not pause saying that's it, inevitably pause, true. Pause there are many second. smart pause people who are on second. welfare, I'm sure. Pause, pause, pause it one second. I love the, uh, the, the dichotomy between neuroscientists and people who are on welfare. Yeah. Right? Like, like, like those are two different types of categories of people. Uh, scientists or poor people. Uh, that's, that, that's what it works out for, for Ben there. Also, let's keep in mind what the gifted and talented program is. We used to have one in New York They're I think they're getting, uh, hopefully they're getting rid of it. And I believe they, I don't know if they did already or didn't. New Jersey, rather yeah, than New Jersey, it was like, a, yeah. There is, there are without a doubt gifted students who, you know, you could have like a, a violin prodigy or a math prodigy or a science prodigy or, or you know, uh, uh, I, I don't know, uh, other types of prodigies, I guess. But the numbers that we're talking about, they're not all gifted and talented. They're all within a range of being, you know, uh, smarter or not smarter than other kids in certain situations. But they all are, and you see this dynamic, at least in New York City, it was very clear, um, that you have wealthier kids, broadly speaking, wealthier kids living in areas where the schools may not be as 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 good we know we know there's reams and reams of data about what um what your how your performance in school is a function of your income of your family's income i mean are there exceptions to this i'm sh absolutely sure but but every educator i've ever spoken to on this program could basically say you tell me what the uh, median income is in that uh, area code or that zip code, and I'll tell you the quality of the schools as measured by their test-taking abilities. And incidentally, that's how you get into the gifted and talented. You take a test. I was in not like a, I was in it, and it was not, I was not at like a school that was underfunded. It was like a highly taxed school or whatever, and where I grew up in New Jersey. And I mean, it was exactly that dynamic. <laughs> and it is. Um, and so uh, he's it's just bizarre, but it's also even bizarre, even on his own terms, that he's comparing a scientist with someone on welfare. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, you know that Ben Carson uh, did uh, uh, was uh, made use of food stamps growing up. So there's a one person that crosses that oh, divide. Oh, well, he <laughs> wrote one person. Or he was saying uh, on that, he would say on average, you know, yeah. Ben Carson grows to the top. But like, I mean, he's also just one step away from race science there too, right? Th right, there's... it is, but it's all, it's also just like, this is what Charles Murray did after the bell curve, which is like, it, you move on to the it, class stratification is because of inbuilt genetic and uh, cultural You naturalize issues. the cl class stratification yeah. and, and um, poverty. And that's why these folks are always like moths to a flame with IQ, because that's w w the best function it serves is to naturalize dis discrepancies even though there have been countless studies i mean you, like he, iq is based on science and data right but so are the studies that disprove how iq is actually indicative of intelligence well, that's also based on science and data and show how it's super racialized we'll have a stephen gould quote on that yeah. uh, coming up yeah let's uh, let's play the rest of the uh, ben shapiro 
parents are neuroscientists, there's a good shot that their kid is going to have a higher IQ than somebody, both of whose parents are on welfare. Okay, that is just the, I'm not saying that's inevitably true. There are many smart people who are on welfare, I'm sure. He's They're not all that many stupid true. neuroscientists, but they're, I'm sure, smart people on welfare. But if you have to take the average person, and all you know about them is child of two neuroscientists versus child of two people on welfare in a free American society, and all you, and all you have to go on is that, whose kid do you think is going to have the higher IQ? Okay, so to pretend that that doesn't exist in real life is stupid. It's just dumb. It's like saying that two, two tall parents are not likely to have a height gifted child where i mean how could we possibly say that some people are more height gifted than others to pretend that intelligence isn't inborn at all and we are all sort of tabula rasa is silly it's just not true by any available metric okay but this pause is what it, california pause it, wanted pause to it, teach. pause it pause it okay first off i love the fact that he's obsessed about um uh yeah, someone is gifted with height because he was ungifted yeah. uh, <laughs> but 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 Notice what, he, what he's doing here. He's is doing exactly what what Emma said in terms of like naturalizing, and he's not even naturalizing uh, intelligence as much as he is like naturalizing economic status, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And as if this tracks, uh, you know, one to one in this country. He's making two arguments at once. One is that intelligence is is exclusively a function of genetics which is absurd. And he's also arguing that success in a field or making money is also a function of genetics. Yep. And, and once you do that, you've basically said society is exactly as it, ha as it should be. Yep. They recommend it against shifting students into accelerated courses and because they want to punish skill sets. They want to defeat the skillsocracy. The last thing you want to do is reward people who are gifted, who, by the way, should use their gifts on behalf of society in a free market society. Free markets allow people to distribute the uses of their gifts widely. This is the magic of free markets. Also, so, so he's like a facts over feelings guy, right? And he compares intelligence to height. Height is a quantifiable quantifiable metric. Somebody's 6'5", five, somebody's 5'5", five, five, and in, in this case, that somebody is Ben Shapiro, most likely. But like with intelligence, there are a variety of metrics that you can uh, view intelligence on. And I don't agree with pretty much any of them because I think it's entirely embedded in class and smartness is usually just a way for, or intelligence is usually just a way for uh, people in that stratus, strata to, to uh make themselves feel like greater than they are or whatever and it keeps class uh in place but you can't quantify it so i thought he was the facts over feelings guy essentially he's trying to say if you succeed in society that is the direct measure of intelligence but that's connecting a few things facts over feelings guy that's not an actual metric directed to intelligence well yeah i mean the obvious uh, thought experiment is to switch the uh, child in the poor neighborhood with the rich parents and see whose uh, brain develops better if they're you know not missing <laughs> meals and stuff like that um, but we have this great um clip from stephen jay gould from 1981 yeah and this is a book i would recommend to anybody with interest in this stuff and the, the way science can be used for racism uh, his book um the mismeasure of man uh, but he's got this he's interviewed here in 1981 and uh, I think he lays it out in about a couple minutes everything you need to say and nothing has really updated since then what do you think uh, American society is so obsessed with IQ I don't know that we're obsessed by it but uh, I think it arises largely in the context of the lamentable history of our racism I don't know that it's as much an issue in more homogeneous societies but we have a situation based on the legacy of racism and continued oppression of people of African descent in this country that has led, for social reasons, to poor average performance of blacks on these tests. That doesn't tell you why it happens, but in a basically racist climate in a country with a strong racist history, I suppose it's not surprising that particularly conservative social thinkers would try to relate poor performance of blacks to intrinsic biological limits. So, as I like to put it, the quick critique of the bell curve is that it's based upon four assumptions, all of which have to be true. If any one of them is false, the whole argument collapses. First, there has to be a meaningful 
single number that can be given to intelligence. I think that's false. Secondly, you have to be able to rank people in a single linear order upon it. And that order has to then correlate with social attributes, whether you go to prison or not, whether you have children out of wedlock, etc., your income. Thirdly, that number has to be highly heritable. And fourthly, it has to be unchangeable or effectively unchangeable. A lot of people confuse the third and the fourth. They assume that if something's heritable, it means it's unchangeable, but that's false. Suppose the first three were true and they're not. I mean, suppose there was a legitimate number and you could rank people and it was highly hereditary. It still could be very mutable. For example, the obvious example is I may have a, uh, an inherited defect of vision, which is 100% inherited, and I go to the drugstore and I buy a pair of eyeglasses and my vision is fine. I mean, it could be, all those things could be true about intelligence, but the equivalent of buying the pair of eyeglasses, namely programs of remedial education, might boost IQ, and then the whole argument would collapse. Yeah, yeah that's great. Uh, I, I love that clip, both because it's so uh, clear and such a, an indictment of this type of, um, of essentialism, uh, and also uh, how messy his desk is. Yeah, uh, because that, that really justifies my, my or directly quantify if somebody has so many papers on their desk that they are in the intelligent bracket. How can you trust this man? He's got a dirty desk. Yeah, well, I mean, I've my methodology is different. Dirtier desk means smarter. I mean, I'm unintentionally, unintentionally giving Sam a compliment here. Uh, cleaner desk means you don't have that many papers, so you can't you can't be that smart. Um, also, I think like. It, Shapiro, if he's the facts and science guy, right, he should uh, understand the concept of variables, but, um, or causation versus correlation, but that doesn't seem to enter his, his brain when talking about these topics. Uh, really, um, really, uh, the varnish came off a little bit on, uh, on Shapiro on that one. Yeah, well, you knew when CRT uh, like took down the governor in Virginia that these guys were going to start getting back into the old Charles Murray stuff. Dust that copy off. Let's see if we can see what kind of uh, what kind of mileage we can get out of this now. We're running with this. They are running with it. <laughs>